And so as I'm like jogging like a madman, sweats a bead coming down my face, I see a dude in a suit cruising down in a bird and I'm like, oh man, <laughs> I need to make that happen ASAP. So I'm just getting back to San Diego. Um, I had an amazing feel good moment in court today. I had a readiness conference up in Vista on a DUI case, and I had to share this feel good moment. I was walking through the halls um, at the Vista courthouse and one of my clients was sitting down there and he said, hey, what's up, Kersey? And I looked over and I immediately recognized him. He had a case a few years back, it was a pretty serious case. But the really cool thing was he just got a job. He was so proud. He was basically, he was beaming. He was glowing over the fact that he got this job. You know, he had his work shirt on and it, it showed me the logo with pride. It was just a really cool moment because he looked so vibrant and so happy and so full of life. And it was just an amazing situation. And I told him, man, I, I, I remember during your case, you looked so much more stressed and worried and, and naturally so I mean he was he was facing some facing some pretty serious time and so one thing that I can say is yes I mean I have represented people who live a life of crime and have dedicated unfortunately their life to that and, and doing you know a bit in prison is just sort of the cost of doing business but you know most of my clients are hard-working everyday people maybe fell on hard times, maybe suffered a lapse in judgment, but they just wanna be treated fairly within the system and make sure that their rights are protected. And so it's so cool to see when you had a client and you know they're a good person and they just were in a jam and you're able to help them out. And he was actually really thankful and, and, and that's just a feel good moment. There's a lot of different industries or different areas of law that I could have gone into. But I'll tell you, I'm so thankful to be a criminal defense and immigration attorney and actually have true and legitimate impact on people's lives. It's such a blessing uh, to be able to do what I do. And so that is very much a feel good gratitude moment for me. And I had to share it with you. So I'm heading back to the office right now. I've got a meeting with a potential new client. So that's always exciting, you know, find out what someone's problem is and see what kind of solutions I can offer how I can make them feel better in a situation that usually is extremely difficult scary person's worried sad frustrated angry upset nervous and to be to be the one person who can in some way help alleviate that stress is a blessing what's funny though is I just realized that I need to get the bird app desperately I um, I had to jog to the ICE office ICE stands for Immigration and Customs Enforcement um, so I had to go over to the ICE office and deliver a document there's kind of a emergency situation that I needed to address and so as I'm like jogging like a madman sweats a bead coming down my face I see a dude in a suit cruising down in a bird and I'm like, oh man, <laughs> I need to make that happen ASAP. Got my documents served, just heading up on a quick elevator ride to the office to meet this potential new client. I'm feeling pretty good, but obviously I need to take a towel to my face because I'm uh, sweating like a pig. So I'm walking out of the office now. <sighs> I'm gonna get to the house, change clothes real quick so I can head to dinner. I'm supposed to meet up at 6.30. It's already 6.15, so I'm already kind of running behind, so I gotta hurry up. So one thing that they say when you're starting a vlog is not to look at the people that pass you. Like, don't even pay attention, so that's what I'm doing. I gotta say, it's been a great day. If you think about it, most days are actually really good days. Just so fortunate and blessed to be able to do what it is that I wanna do. <laughs> trying to avoid this car that I'm not trying to get hit up in here. But yeah, most days are good days. If you feel like they're not, 
it's gratitude and perspective, I'm telling you. I know I've been harping on this and I will continue to do so. But especially for my lawyers, my lawyers, you know, I'm on a mission, I'm on a crusade because our profession, our profession is ailing, our profession is hurting. Suicide rate is through the roof. Obesity, let's see, substance abuse, alcohol abuse, um, depression, anxiety. There's just so many problems that we have within our profession. And I just wanna use my voice to do what I can to help stop that. I mean, if there's anything that I can do, or, you know, it's one of those things where if you can, if you can make a change for one person, then, you know, you've, you've done your, you've done your job. Obviously I'd like to have more people live better lives, but yeah, just that, that one person who decides to, you know, start working out again, or decides to clean up their diet or, you know, does what they need to do to, you know, seek therapy, whatever it is that might change their life for the better. You know, I'm on a crusade to make that happen because I just feel so fortunate and blessed to be where I'm at at this place. But it's certainly taken a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of money. <laughs> you know, therapy isn't free. Plenty of books read um, to be in this place where I'm at where you know, I'm just on this positive kick. You know, I know I'm not a, I'm not a very animated person, but I'm just a very, very, very happy person. And so to the extent I can, you know, spread that word and, and again, you know, help people improve their lives. I'm all about it, all about it. All right, so I got changed. My Uber is already here. So uh, he came a lot quicker than they usually come. Uh, it usually takes at least about five minutes, um, but this one came in like two. So I'm like, damn, man, you can't be, <laughs> can't be switching it up on me like that. But I'm glad it didn't take long because I'm actually running a few minutes behind. So hopefully you can step on it and we'll get ready for dinner. So are you from here? Huh? Uh, I've been out here 12 years. Oh, nice. Yeah, Where, you? yeah, I've been here my whole life. Oh, nice. I've been here my whole life. Not going anywhere. It's too nice here. Where are you from? Uh, I grew up in Illinois. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, so you've like experienced legit winters and everything. Oh yeah. <laughs> See, so you have perspective. I this is all I know. This is I've been here my whole life, so I really don't even know how good I have it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, it's all good. Just taking the scenic route. Yeah. <laughs> how you like Uber? Uber's cool. Uber's cool. I'm retired right now, though. I. I I hadn't driven it for like a month because my car has been in the shop and um, so I just got back to doing it yesterday. I did one trip yesterday and they were like my second trip back I and mean, I, I guess I've uh, lost a little focus on it since I'm driving again all the way out a little out of the way right now. Yeah, no, I hear you. Do you do you do another job or? Yeah, yeah, I mean for a restaurant downtown. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's called the Zero Sweet Sweet Beer House. Okay, yeah, yeah. Definitely been there after hours. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> they have the good little brownies, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, who bakes those? Uh, we got a we got a guy that we get our, all of our desserts from that he, uh, extraordinary desserts, our next extraordinary, um, some desserts or something like that. Okay. Uh, call them up and he brings all the stuff in nice wait so are they are they really that good or is it just because i've been drinking it's usually around 2 a.m no, that i'm asking like, like really like so. yeah. yeah nice that's yeah, cool I'll man get you, uh, get you some uh some coupons here because uh, or some cards because oh nice yeah. well thanks man I, re I really appreciate it it's been kind of gloomy today yeah june may gray june gloom yeah Oh, okay. We're, I wasn't lucky enough to be stationed there here. Right. <laughs> well, you're here now, man. That's all yeah. that counts. Thanks for your service. I appreciate it. Oh, no problem. No problem. Yeah. And my dad was in the military. He's a Marine for like 26 years, something wow. like that. Saw combat and everything. For him, he didn't uh, get hurt. Oh, he, he did. Um, yeah, he, he got messed up pretty bad fortunately didn't lose a limb or anything like that but I think a bomb had gone off and, um, and he ended up getting buried under rubble and it uh, 
you know, he, he ended up in the hospital for quite some time and, and physically he was fine, but, uh, you know, the PTSD was, was something really serious. When the fireworks would go off, it, it just be, it'd be too much for him. It, it was, it was rough. So I, um, I didn't really understand it as a kid. As I grew up and you know learned more about psychology and everything and learned more about PTSD, I'm like, man, I felt feel really bad. Yeah, it was uh, it's a bad deal. It was, yeah. But as long as he came out being a good man and not becoming an alcoholic and all yeah. that mess, so uh, that's good. Yeah. Like, so I have those guys when they come out and they just too much from take. Right, so, right. So. Yeah, he certainly had his, uh, you know, issues, but, but we all do. And that's like one thing that I realized, you know, you like fault your parents for all these different types of things. And you realize like, there's just no handbook to life, you know, no. <laughs> everyone's just trying to do the best they can. So I'm just getting back from dinner, had a great time. It's always good to catch up with friends. I'm heading home. I'm like way more tired than I thought I would be. I'm probably gonna end up going to sleep early tonight, so. So I was gonna go back to the office and get some written work done, but I'm not gonna be able to after all because I'm not really feeling it right now. I really just want to chill because I'm feeling a little tired and my throat's starting to scratch a little bit. It's feeling a little scratchy. So I'm just going to grab my computer and uh, do a little bit of editing, do a little bit of video editing, and I'll probably call it a night early tonight. But the crazy thing is just the amount of energy that's necessary to put into a brand new business. So I started what is now Kersey Law in 2010. And so we're in 2018, so it's just over eight years old. And even today, I feel like, I feel like it's still like a brand new startup. You know what I mean? There's so many, so many things to get down. And it's like, you talk to a lot of older entrepreneurs and they're 10, 20, 30 years in and oftentimes the thought is that if you knew how much it was gonna take, <laughs> if you knew how much energy it was going to require, you probably wouldn't have ended up doing it. And that's the thing, like if I had it to do all over again, would I do it? I think I would. At the end of the day, for me, it's just, it's just important to be a number one. I definitely believe that you need to be able to be led before you can lead. In other words, in order to be a great leader, you need to have first been a great follower. And I'd like to think that I was a great follower. You know, practicing that just level of humility and everything, I definitely had that and I still have that. If someone is worth following, if someone's worth listening to, if someone has information that can benefit me, I definitely have the humility to, to listen, to, to be able to grow. And I really believe that you can learn something from almost anyone. And so, but yeah, you know, even with the amount of work that it's taken to get where I'm at, to get my company where it's at, <laughs> there's still so much, so much more to go. But that's part of the joy of it all. You know, I, that's, that's part of, you know, it's the love of the game. It's, it's, <laughs> it's life, you know, em embracing the grind, embracing the journey. Here we are, back to the office. So this is the office lobby. That's a coffee shop. They have great coffee and gelato and everything. Check it out. Got the name on the board. Where am I? Oh, I'm on the third floor. Oh, 
uh, this is Jamal Kersey. So they haven't changed it to Kersey Law yet, but it's official. <laughs> a lot of people don't think this elevator works, but it actually does. It's old school. So we'll wait for the elevator to come down. But uh, you can also see this old school shoe shine chair. I had posted this on Instagram. I think during Black History Month. This was a department store in like the early 1900s. I think the late 1800s, early 1900s. It's called Marston's. And actually, let me show you this. So you can see that's like the placard. It's like, you know, section one, first floor, dress goods, silks and velvets, domestic goods, cotton fabrics and linens. You see, it's pretty cool, huh? But yeah, as I thought about the shoe shine chair, as we get into the elevator here, um, third floor. Yeah, as I thought about the shoe shine chair, I just thought, you know, in 1900, there's no way, there's no way a black man could even possibly be sitting in a shoe shine chair, getting his shoe shined, and you know, 100 plus years later. You know, this is an office building and, you know, I'm a lawyer and I run a law practice on the third floor of the Marston building. That's, you know, that's special. That's, uh, that's that thing I like to call perspective. <laughs> Back to this, uh monstrosity I call an office. Um, it's like I said, I'm just here to pick up my computer so I can get this editing in. But actually, let me give you a little tour. This is my office. It's my law degree. Went to USD, graduated 08. Got my bachelor's degree. I was a Spanish literature major, went to San Diego State. And that is the certificate for passing the bar. Pass the bar first try. And um, this is my art. So the square pictures are Rothko's. Then the crown is Basquiat. And the dog over here on the end is Picasso. My other piece, my other piece of art is this, uh, this painting here. I think this is so beautiful. Um, this is from Havana. So I went to Havana for New Year's Eve in 2016. And so this is actually, you see where it says at the top, uh, Floridita, that's the Floridita bar. It's a very famous bar in Havana. Um, they call it La Cuna del Daiquiri. Um, it's a, yeah, it's a beautiful spot. And these cars, you know, um, you'll see those type of cars all over the place in Havana. You know, a bunch of Bel Airs, old Cadillacs, it's just, you know, it's almost like a time capsule with the cars. They actually take, you know, modern motors and put them in these old school cars. And so all the taxi cab drivers drive these cars. This is the reception area. <clears throat> so I got a couple of my awards up here. I've got mine and Patty's car. Got the photo that my good friend Arash took. Actually, that's who I went to dinner with. I love this photo. I think he just uh, did such a great job making me look good. It's kind of hard to do. <laughs> and so we have our seating area for potential new clients. Always make sure to offer them a cup of water as soon as they come in. We try and accommodate them well. And then we have where Patty used to sit. She's not here anymore. She sits in another room, but Yazil sits here, our new receptionist. And then then we have this other room in here that we are redesigning. It's a little dark in here, but uh, this was um, a message that Patty had put on the board when we had a meeting. Um, and I thought it was, I thought these were really good lessons. Have a clear vision, know your priorities, focus on value, lose the urgency, stop struggling, purge the waste and schedule your escape. So this is when I'm supposed to go on vacation. I don't know where I'm going yet, but I'm going to take some time off and it's well deserved. I've been grinding. I've been grinding my tail off for quite some time. And so let's see, we'll walk in here. 
And this is like our conference room. Um, <clears throat> so we got the conference room table, got the green screen in here. I need to take that down. Not exactly in love with the green screen like that on there, but hey, it served as function. Then we have the shirts that were actually getting folded and um, organized. So Patty was working on that. And so she has them nice and neatly bundled here and organized by size. Patty's amazing. You know, <laughs> got ADD up in here. Um, but this is an award that I'm really proud of. This is the Order of Barristers Award. Um, I got that award for being one of the top eight oral advocates in my graduating class from law school. So that was you know, quite the prestigious award and one I'm very proud of. But <clears throat> what I was gonna say is that it's so easy um, to get wrapped up in you know what you don't have or what you'd like to have and not be able to appreciate what you do have. You see, there, were, there was a time when I really, really, really wanted to be able to work in this office. So one of my mentors and friends, uh, Jose Badillo, uh, solid criminal defense attorney, his office is here. His office is over in the corner. I mean, I remember coming to his office, getting to know him better and wanting an office here. And here we are, you know, a long time later, but here we are, I have an office here and there have been a number of employees that we've had here. Like I said, I've created a bunch of jobs, created internships, helped a whole lot of people. So that's why it is so important to keep things in perspective because it's very easy to get lost if you get wrapped up in comparisons, if you get wrapped up in in desiring you know that which you don't have and interestingly enough the desire you have to have something will generally far exceed the pleasure derived from having the thing and so that's the thing where you're like oh man i want that car or i want that toy or i want whatever and then you get it and a couple weeks later or a couple months later then it's just a thing you know, and that happens with cars, that happens with homes, that happens with clothes, that happens with all kinds of things. And so I kind of fell into a rut for a little while because, you know, business is challenging. It's, it's difficult. It is not easy being an entrepreneur. It's not easy being the number one guy. You know, everything falls back to you. I try and, I try and give credit to others, you know, as much as I can. I'd much rather give credit and accept the blame. You know, I blame myself for everything that happens here, no matter what, whether it's my fault or not, I accept responsibility for everything that happens here. So it's interesting because there's this culture where it's become like sexy to be the boss, to be the CEO, to be the entrepreneur, and especially all over social media. I mean, you're seeing people post, you know, stacks of money, or you're seeing people post videos on private jets you're seeing people post stuff on yachts and all that kind of stuff and i think it's very easy to get swept up in the idea of you know you know in the whole materialism game and and i think that's that's unfortunate because the reality is that will not be the life for most entrepreneurs ever really but it's it's not a bad thing because if you can find the truth which is that your happiest times will be when you are spending time with the people that you love, when you are doing things that you love, when you feel like you're building something, when you have a purpose, those will bring you so much more joy than anything you could ever possibly purchase. And so that's a very profound lesson that I honestly wish I would have learned earlier on in life. I very much was under the belief or under the impression that my happiness would come when I had certain things, when I lived in a certain place, when I drove a certain car, when I was dating a certain person, when I was finally an attorney, when I made this much money, when I was able to go on these vacation destinations, all these different things. And so what turned out to be the case was that was completely false. What turned out to be the case is that I realized that again, my happiest times ever in life were sharing a laugh with a friend or 
you know, being around my family, enjoying the time with the people that I love, having experiences. And, you know, I'm not necessarily even talking about, you know, expensive vacations. I'm just talking about, you know, being at the, <laughs> being at the, the pool hall, but just having, you know, a couple $3 beers with your buddies and, and hanging out. And so, you know, that's, that's a lesson that I, that I wish I had learned sooner, but I got it. <laughs> I've embraced it. And it's a profound, very important life lesson. So realistically for this episode two, I think there's no better way to close out this video than by shouting out my mom and shouting out my dad. I want to thank my mom. She's not here. Actually, neither of my parents are here anymore, but I just want to thank my mom for her undying love, her undying compassion, her grace, her teaching me giving, the gift of giving at such a young age. I want to thank my dad for reading to me as if I was a, a, a little man at the time. He always, he never did the Goo Goo Gaga talk. He always spoke to me logically and methodically, read complex books to me at a really young age. And I think that's where, well, I know that's where my logic comes from. That's where, that's why I'm so articulate. That's why I speak so well. The way I think all comes from him. And so that mix of, you know, the love and compassion and grace mixed with you know, what my father gave me mentally, without them, I wouldn't be who I am today. And so I thank them so much. I thank God for blessing me with two amazing parents who did all they could to make sure that I grew up safe, that I got a good education, and that I could just be all that I could be. So thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right, y'all. So that's the end of episode two. I hope you liked it. If you did, please throw me a like, comment. Let me know what you think. Also, you know, if you have any questions that you want me to answer in the next vlog, I'd be happy to do so. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button, make sure you do so, so you know when we're going to have the next episodes coming up. Well, I want to thank you for your time and that's all. Till next time.